what's up everybody and welcome back to the channel like many of you i've been grinding the hell out of the game since the october 10th patch dropped because we had a ton of new stuff that we had to work on put together farm and so on whether it's ultimate freina and unlocking and catalyzing her fully to new mods that we had to farm and test and all of that but we also have a brand new void intercept boss to kill and to farm for external components as well as the weapon that it drops and this is of course death stalker now, I've got about 30 kills under my belt now and by far the easiest descendant to do uh, this Void Intercept boss with if you ask me is Enzo and the reason why I say he's the easiest is because not only is he basically almost unkillable unless you really really screw up but you're also adding a lot of additional damage for your teammates and you're basically helping them to also deal a lot more damage to this boss which is essentially like a DPS race the point is you just have to outlast the boss and basically be able to sustain all of the damage that it deals and at the same time you need to be dealing your own damage so that you can kill him in the uh 10 minutes that you have to basically complete the fight now the build that i'm going to show you today for enzo is perfect for deathstalker but it also coincidentally is the best build in my opinion for any of the other void intercept bosses as well because of the fact that it makes you nigh unkillable and because you are actually able to push out a fairly decent amount of damage yourself so it's not just the case of that yes you're unkillable and you're a tank and you give other people firepower boost and stuff like that but you're kind of like a wet sponge you can actually deal a whole bunch of damage as well and that's probably one of the reasons why this is my favorite favorite build to actually take in into void intercept situations now you might be wondering why i'm saying that you're unkillable when you play this build and that's because we stack so much shield with this build that we're pretty much unkillable so at the moment right now i'm sitting just under 27k shield of course you have one hp because we're using overwhelming shield but a little bit more about that just now and then of course i've got about 6,000 defense which also does help your shield take a little bit more damage before it goes down because defense actually affects the durability uh, or rather the damage reduction for your hp as well as for your shield so it's not a completely dead stat but nonetheless we want to be you know obviously stacking as much shield as possible and 27k is pretty much in my opinion like the highest you can go before you start negatively affecting other things on the build that being said the footage that you're seeing in the background is using this exact build and because of the other abilities the other skills that enzo has you're actually able to keep yourself up at all times and just be able to tank an insane amount of damage generally speaking the rule of thumb when you are being attacked by death stalker is that you should seek cover and avoid the damage because death stalker can download so much damage onto you at one time but with this build you can evict effectively stand in the shit and just eat it uh, and this is one of the reasons why i like it so much is because it's basically just easy mode you can just be sure that you have enough mana that you can keep casting your ability to boost up your shield and you'll essentially basically be unkillable as usual i just quickly pause right here so you can take a screenshot if you want to dip otherwise if you want to hang around we can talk about the reasons why i pick some of these mods and basically how it all comes together alongside the weapons and all of that stuff but let's get into it the reason why it also works is because you add a lot of utility to your team so this is probably the part of the build that's going to upset you the most but you should have supply firearm enhancer the reason why this is a really really good mod is obviously because this allows you to actively increase the firepower damage of your allies as well as yourself basically what you're going to do is you're going to increase your crit by a huge amount and because your weapon crits more obviously you deal more damage now likely you want to pair this with your own weapon that also does a lot of crit damage once it starts critting so that's obviously something we're going to do as well but the other thing that i also want to concentrate on this with this build with not only making us super tanky and unkillable is that i want to make the fourth ability which is perfect support which is something that we can give to our allies which gives them ammo gives them crit as well as gives us crit and as well as the other abilities i want to make their cooldowns as snappy as possible so that i can have maximum uptime on all of these abilities which means that whenever you need to buff yourself or your teammates you can do that whenever you need to heal yourself you can do that as well and that's very easily doable with the right collection of mobs so i will show you exactly how to do that but first things first 
when we look at Enzo's abilities, we have his first ability, which is essentially if you are wearing supply firearm enhancer, what it does is it changes his first ability into this device that you put down on the ground. And as soon as you run over it, you get a buff. And as soon as your allies run over it, they get a buff as well. Now, at the beginning, when Enzo came out, a lot of people didn't get this. I am happy to report that these days when you throw one of these downs, people are uh, generally smart enough to go ahead and run through it. But yeah, nonetheless, uh, sometimes you will still have allies that don't know that they're supposed to run through it to activate that buff on themselves. But nonetheless, what this does is it increases your weak point damage by 15% and it also gives you 29% critical hit rate increase. Uh, that is a lot, trust me, and that makes a big difference because what that can do is oftentimes with weapons with decent crit on already, you can crit cap yourself alongside one of the other buffs that we're also going to do. Now, the second ability is essentially just like a drone, a mine that you launch. This is the ability that you're going to use the least out of your kit, specifically with this bolt that I'm showing you here, because uh, this doesn't do a lot of damage because we're not stacking a lot of skill power into it. And it's basically just, you know, like a, a kind of like a waste of MP because there's better things that you can be doing with your MP. Now, the third ability is really the, the I would say, the glue that brings all of this together. And that's because this is Enhanced Combat Suit. And this is a little drone that essentially hovers around you. And you'll see that in the footage that's been playing in the background when I use this. And basically, what this does is for eight seconds, this gives me, at the very beginning, 25% shield recovery. So it heals 25% of my shield. And then it continuously heals 6% over time. And this is basically because we have such a massive amount of shield. Once we activate this, we get such a large chunk of actual shield back. And then the fact that you can just keep on using this over and over since it has a very, very low cooldown of like 9.2 seconds means that you can basically keep yourself up even while you're standing in the worst possible conditions and getting shot, you know, to fucking bits. And then last but not least, we have perfect support, which is essentially the buff ability, which show, like makes the drone above you. Now, this does a lot of stuff, but we can put Pretty much bake it down into the two things that we care about we don't care about the fact that this drone shoots and that it explodes and that it causes damage those things don't matter to us because we aren't stacking skill power so this drone is not sexy for that by any means what we do want this drone to do is the first thing which is to give us bullets back that's the other reason why enzo is so hot because if you use this regularly you'll never run out of bullets and this will mean that you will have to spend less time shooting the little enemies around in a void intercept or going back to the chest at the beginning to basically get yourself ammo back. And then last but not least, this is the big one though. It also once again increases your firearm attack by 20% and it gives you another 20% of critical hit rate increase but the basic thing is when you use this in combination with supply firearm enhancer you're giving yourself 49 percent increased critical chance and that is what i'm saying this is the point where you can actually start crit capping yourself now let me show this to you quickly in action so by default just standing here you can see i've got my enduring legacy here and I'm sitting on 33.56% critical hit rate. And then I'm almost on eight times multiplier when I do crit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to activate my one ability. And then I'm going to activate my drone. I'm going to step through that. So now both effects are active on me. And you can actually see that next to my character there. And now we can go back in. We can see, holy shit, 92% crit rate. And then, of course, when we do crit, we're dealing like, you know, eight, almost eight times damage. So this is the reason why this is so good. You can ramp yourself up and deal a huge amount of damage. Now, I am using the Enduring Legacy here. You don't have the buff for nearly long enough to shoot through all 184 bullets with the Enduring Legacy, but that's fine. It's also, there are going to be times when you don't have these buffs up and then the Enduring Legacy is still going to do some heavy carrying in any case. But that's the point. That's the reason why we use those you know abilities together. And that's the increase in damage that you can basically give yourself. So this is really, really good. And the main thing is you're also giving this to the other members in your team so if you have any gunny uh kind of descendants in the, the team you know glaze will love you anybody else that's running around with a fucking enduring legacy will love you pretty much anybody that's shooting with a decent gun at uh the void intercept boss is going to love this buff okay so now that we see how everything fits together let's just quickly run through all of the mods here so i'm gonna split the mods into two groups i'm gonna I'm going to cover the mods which have to do with basically, uh, you know, increasing our survivability. We're going to talk about those ones first. And then we're going to talk about the mods that create what I call a perfect loop and allow us to have 
all of our abilities up whenever we want them or basically off of cooldown whichever one is more important to you so first things first overwhelming shield is how we start the whole shield building thing right overwhelming shield what it does is it fixes you to one hp but then gives you a decent amount of shield for that and then any other additional max hp that you uh, stack on your descendant will actually increase your shield uh, by an equivalent amount so the point is that now any max hp that you're getting on your uh, external components is going to give you more shield and any additional uh, hp that you stack in mods is going to do the same thing and that's how we're able to get as high as 27k now i've seen higher you can definitely get higher i've managed to get it close to 30k but like i said uh, there are some other mods which are important for me to be in here so 27 is basically where we're stuck at now next thing we want to do is we want to start stacking in some additional either hp or shield we do that by throwing in increased hp we throw hp conversion in which gives us a decent amount of shield but then also reduces our hp by a bit then we throw in stim accelerant which gives us a decent amount of hp again but actually takes some of our mp off and then last but not least we take increased shield so we have overwhelming shield and we have these four mods here just additionally buffing us up even more now you can mess around with this a little bit and i would say the odd one out that you could potentially experiment with and replace with something else would be hp conversion shield but the bottom line is this is this this is what i set on and and what i've kind of like settled on and this is what gives me the 27 which we looked at just before then the rest of the mods that are on here is all about like us being able to hit like a good rotation and having our abilities be available off cooldown all the time that means we are using skill extension which gives us more skill duration all right we're using multi-talented and the reason why we're using multi-talented is because when using a dimension active skill your skill cooldown is minus 20.5 percent for five seconds now these two abilities here right this guy here explosive drone and this guy here enhanced combat suit are both dimensions so whenever you activate one of these two you're gonna get this five second buff that the next ability is going to get a massive minus 20.5 percent cooldown reduction so remember that because that's going to be important just now when i show you the rotation and how we get this perfect rotation okay then we're also using mp conversion which gives us skill cooldown and again gives us less mp as well another negative 15 percent now we're going to have to do something to combat the fact that we're losing so much mp and we're going to have to do that with the external component so bear that in mind and then last but not least we also have over here we have amplification control which gives skill effect range plus 51.7 percent but also does give us some max shield as well now you might be wondering okay my dude but it's cool we're doing all of these extension things now and like nimble fingers here which gives us skill cooldown and all of that but why the hell would you use skill effect range plus 51.7 percent okay let me explain it doesn't explicitly say it on this skill here but this actually has a radius to where it can attach these drones onto your allies why is this important because if you don't have at least some range on this then it means that the attachment range for you activating this ability and it attaching these drones to your allies around you is going to be very very small that means that you are going to have to constantly be aware and watch where your allies are so you can run close to them and you can activate this to make sure that they also get this buff however if you increase your range then the range by which this drone can attach is bigger and so therefore it makes it a little bit easier for you to manage and to make sure that your allies actually get this so i find that amplification control is really good for us here because not only does it give us a little bit of shield as well which feeds into the whole mechanic of us being tougher but it gives us this increased range as well now we're also going to get range from our reactor which we're going to talk about just now and those two together i find to be a really really good sweet spot in terms of attaching the drone to your allies by not having to exactly stand next to them now what is the perfect rotation that i'm talking about let me show you that as well so for example if we're standing here now ideally what you want to do right is you want to be able to and maybe i can go back here first and just to show you this you'll see here that the base cooldown that this ability starts out with right is 90 seconds but through the use of nimble fingers and some of the other mods like mp conversion and stuff that we've put on here we have it at 27.6 seconds cooldown right but we have a duration of 
10.2 seconds so we're still quite far away from like you know that means you're going to have about 17.4 seconds of downtime right that you're not going to be able to have this buff and we don't like that so let's go ahead and change that now the perfect rotation works like this and the reason why this works is because of multi-talented so in an ideal situation i'm gun fighting all the stuff everything like that all the buffs have fallen off i'm good to go and i want to fucking do a full buff up what we do is we drop our first ability and we wait for that buff to wear off then after that when that goes away we go heal drone or shoot grenade and then while that buff is up we hit that boom and now you'll see that we have 10 seconds of perfect fire where we have both buffs up we're dealing a huge amount of crits and this crits are dealing damage and as soon as the drone buff falls off my next drone buff is ready again and i can just repeat and go again all the while you can just keep this up the entire time and as long as you have enough mp you can keep doing this and you'll see as soon as the drone buff falls off the next drone buff is ready to go now all of this works because i also have the perfect reactor for this what you need is you need a reactor that has kill cooldown and skill effect range on it skill cooldown is super super important uh, because this is going to allow us to get that perfect rotation we need the cooldown on a reactor as well as what we have on our descendant mods now skill effect range is up to you if you like what i told you about the fact that you can make the range bigger for the drone attachment then skill effect range is good for you here as well because that in combination with the mod that we have on our descendant is going to give us a fair bit of radius that we can attach that drone to our allies as they are running around with us in a void intercept arena if you don't want or if you don't care about that or if you think that that's something that you can artificially manage by always making sure that you are close to your allies and you want to make things a little bit easier on yourself in terms of like mp maintenance then skill cost can be also really good here because skill cost is going to mean that you have to you can focus less on picking up blue bricks around the arena and uh, you can keep spamming your abilities and making sure that you always have the drone active you always have your heals going and everything like that but all of the footage that you've been seeing has been me using this and through the right external components uh, you shouldn't have a mana problem now let's talk about external components in terms of like the perfect set for enzo i would say that this is once again a set that stacks a lot of hp because you want to be abusing overwhelming shield as much as possible as we know oh, that's completely the wrong place as we know overwhelming shield basically gives us more shield the more hp we stack into it so it makes absolute sense that we want to pick components that have a massive amount of hp on them so double hp on your cigar or your auxiliary power is super super helpful and then on your sensor you absolutely should consider having an hp roll on there but then having max mp and mp recovery and combat i think that that's invaluable uh, due to the fact that we are losing so much mp from the mods that we are putting on the descendant you want to be adding some mp back in and this does that in the form of max mp but then also having mp recovery in combat is invaluable because that is going to actually help you a lot with mana maintenance so that you can concentrate a little bit less on finding more blue bricks uh, blue bricks <laughs> to pick up and uh, more time on actually shooting the enemy then on your uh, uh, your memory you should be using annihilation memory because this can roll 646 on uh, the hp it's the only memory that does this all other memory roll 484 i believe so this will give you a little bit of additional there defense on you is also good and of course any resistance this that you can stack on is also good and then last but not least on your uh, processor you should again try to get yourself at least one hp roll a shield roll on here is also kind of cute and then of course more resistances when you look at my resistances over here the only resistance that i'm lacking uh, a little bit on is chill and that's of course because i have a double stat roll on uh, my sensor which i'm interested in and therefore i can't have chill resistance because that usually comes on this uh, this slot here but these external components would be the ones that i would consider using uh i don't think that there's a set that's necessarily like a like a set bonus that's necessarily perfect for enzo uh just like you'll notice that when it comes to my reactor uh i don't even have his best in slot reactor meaning like with non-attribute and the skills that i care about i am literally just looking for the right substats the two right yellow substats and that is skill cooldown and skill effect range 
so this is basically your package that you're looking at now to round us out let's quickly talk weapons and the two weapons that i would consider uh, to be really really good for enzo to field first and foremost i think best in slot for enzo is enduring legacy uh simply because it it fits his kit very well it it synergizes very well with the buffs that you get like uh like i showed you the stats of like getting close to 100 percent crit rate uh and it just pushes out a huge amount of damage it's one of the highest damage dealing weapons in the game uh the substats on this absolutely do matter as well so you do want to have crit hit rate you want to have crit hit damage you want to have firearm attack i have rounds per magazine on here uh of course i think colossus damage would be better i just at the moment don't, don't have enough mats to keep re-rolling this so i kind of like stuck with rounds for a little while rounds does give you more dps as well because the point is you can shoot longer before having to reload but the bottom line is you have so many rounds in the enduring legacy that you'll in any case never be able to fully clip out um you know on one buff rotation so you know that's that's worth noting so obviously the best fourth one here would be colossus damage but then when we look at the actual mods and i actually have a specific video on enduring legacy so if you want to talk more about the insane nuance behind that and everything there's like a 15 minute video for that on my channel uh but here are the mods that i have on here i haven't changed this thing since i built it originally it's a fucking workhorse and it gets the job done the 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 star of course here is a sharp precision shot which means that you start off with a lower fire rate but as long as you keep your trigger held in and you keep spraying the boss it's going to increase your fire rate eventually giving you plus 40 percent fire rate and it's going to increase your firearm attack eventually giving you plus 60 percent firearm attack so it is important to not spray uh, spray and run spray and run spray and run but rather to get into a position where you know that you're going to be able to dump at least 100 to 120 bullets into the boss because that is really when you're going to start seeing nice ramp up of your numbers and of your damage especially if of course you combine it with the buffs that you get from enzo by default now if you are the kind of person that for some reason doesn't like enduring legacy what is matter with you like like who hurt you uh but if you prefer something else then i can absolutely recommend greg's reverse fate as well of course this is a weapon that's super well known to pretty much everybody i don't think i need to explain this uh it's really really good it uh it was okay before but then it got buffed and it's really really good um so this also again stats on your soup matter a lot and i believe i have what you can consider best in slot here which is crit hit rate crit hit damage firearm attack and then firearm attack versus colossus uh perhaps if you can't get that then instead of colossus you could have just fire on the weapon maybe but uh, i think that this is probably your best bet and the best way that you can you know build yourself some gregs there so then when again just flashing the build here quickly again this is pretty much something that i built back in the day and kind of kept it that way um this is really good uh and and this just gives you a huge amount of damage it actually just pushes out a massive amount of numbers on the boss bear in mind though that this weapon enrages bosses a lot faster than pretty much anything fucking else um so if you are worried about things like enraged timers and stuff like that on certain bosses like gluttony is a good example uh then you need to bear that in mind uh, it is something that needs to be considered i just quickly want to show something here, and that is that for a while i did also mess around with a just a small little change specifically for gluttony and that was just basically giving uh, uh using analysis master which basically then what it does is it uh gives uh it actually reduces the boss's critical hit resistance by an amount now uh i don't know the exact numbers off my head but each of the void intercept bosses have crit resistance so what this means is that uh, just because you have 100% crit rate on a weapon doesn't mean that you're critting 100% of the time. Like Gluttony, for example, has fairly high crit hit uh, rate resistance. So something like Analysis Master helps you and your teammates out a lot because what it does is it lowers their resistance, meaning that your high crits then actually have a higher chance of actually going through and actually critting. So Analysis Master can be very cute for us here. And since this is a a, a, a not just a character that's about showing up and dealing damage but also about offering uh you know synergy and uh you know buffs to your team uh it just kind of feels like this fits very well so i would absolutely you know goof around with this if you want to it says anti-gluttony but this is practically good for any uh, void intercept boss since all of them have crit resistance and my suspicion is each one has more than the last so it's entirely possible without having tested any numbers or anything like that that deathstalker most likely has the highest 
crit hit uh, rate resistance out of all of them. And that's it for the build. Thank you so much for watching, especially if you made it this far. Let me know in the comments down below which descendant you are enjoying to take into fights against Deathstalker or whichever other Void Intercept bosses you are currently fighting at the moment. Uh, I by no means am saying that Enzo is the only descendant that can do it. I have been uh, grinding a lot in the last two days and I have massive amounts of respect for the bunnies, for example, that show up to their stalker fight. Uh, a well played bunny in that fight is fucking invaluable, is also great. I think Eugen is great in that fight. I think Ajax, if the person knows what they're doing, is phenomenal as well. So there are a couple of descendants which are better than the rest. Uh, but I think by far the easiest jack of all trades that is probably the easiest to play as well, especially once you configure him in this way that he's pretty much unkillable, is for sure Enzo. And uh, I need you guys to tell me after you've tested it what you think about it. Other than that, it's just super important to me that you have a fantastic morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. Till next video, fucking cheers.